Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. theCUBE is our uh, third year here at EMC World, SiliconAngle.tv's uh, extensive coverage of EMC World. It all started here at EMC World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and uh, I'm with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with a CUBE friend, a CUBE alum, Chad Sackage. Welcome back. And, Dave, uh, John. <laughs> and congratulations on <laughs> the new great role. To be here. You know, big promotion. Uh, you're very humble about it, but it was, I think, well-deserved. You've made your mark. I think the senior executives of EMC saw that. Uh, but more importantly, uh, and I can vouch for this, the customers within EMC saw that. They know you Thank and they you. have a great deal of respect for you, so congratulations. Uh, that's, that's very, very, very kind. So uh, this is amazing. I mean, it's, it's just awesome to see the growth of EMC and EMC World. Isn't the vibe here incredible? Yeah, and, and I, I, you know, we're honored. The Cube started at yeah. EMC World 2010. Yeah. So how do you how do you guys feel like this EMC World compares to last year or the year before? Yeah, so I think that uh, two years ago it was like your journey to the private cloud. Yep, it was yep. like, okay, that was good, that was great. We had Jeremy on, and he basically told us, you know, things are going to change, boys. You know, we're going big or we're going home. <laughs> and we at the time we think well, it was pretty big, it was pretty good, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Wow, and then, yeah. yeah, I mean, also it was in Boston when we did the first Cube, and it was. Uh, it was a Boston feel to it, so Shout there was out. EMC culture, it was in Boston, food. and then you know, <laughs> we had Tucci on talking about the culture's never, uh, is always evolving, and then since coming to Vegas with the messaging so, so, so tight with Jeremy right now, and so right on and relevant, um, it, and, and plus the execution on the product side, yeah. the V-specialists and the TCs are all here, so like, yep. what you're seeing is a, a, a real energized company that's going for it, right? Absolutely. And, and there's legit uh, a relevance to the markets they're going after, so, you know, although the products, Dave and I always kind of talk about them, the products are, are evolving, there's some holes being filled through acquisition, yep. organic yep. growth, but EMC absolutely is a technology company, and as I said yesterday in the HBase conference in San Francisco, as EMC is like maybe the GE, and then VMware explodes into a whole nother level, Level, and then these acquisitions will come in. So, so we're watching EMC as possibly the next GE of tech. And I, not, you know, and, and, and you look at it that way with VCE and some of the, the in converged infrastructure yep. stuff and with big data, whole new sets of solutions. And uh, you know, Tom Roloff was on earlier talking about you know, how he's structuring mm -hmm. his sales force, uh, or his, his force was, uh, you know, they got the territories on the sales side, but he's going vertical where they're talking not about IT yep. issues, lines of business. And the, the language is different. It's like, I want to solve my problem, increase sales, deliver better genome um, uh, analysis in sure. pharma or whatever. So you're seeing that kind of dialogue in an EMC geek IT world so you're seeing, I'm seeing both. I see the blending of the two. Yep. And, and I think it's exciting, and I think 14,000 people uh, is a record, so congratulations. It, uh, it's a, it's a definitely uh, reflecting a lot of change and adaptation, right? And I think, um, frankly, my, uh, I think one thing that, we're not perfect by any means, <laughs> not, even, not even close when it, on, any, on any one of the parts of our business, but uh, we're striving for perfection always. You know, you can see that from, from the executive team. We all want to be the best that we can be. Uh, but the other thing that I'd say is, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're very adaptable as a company, you know, we're, we're changing furiously. I mean, I, if I take a look at the roughly, you know, three and a half thousand folks in, in EMC pre-sales team, our, our, our technologists that work with our customers, right? Um, you know, we're, we're pushing them hard to go deeper, further, faster. We're, we're, we did a contest, uh, an extreme certification challenge here. There was one guy, one dude, I think his name's Tom Tolles. He, he has 20 expert level certs coming into the conference, and here he did five more, right? But the thing that's fascinating to me is, is uh, that, that learning is, is constant, because like, for example, right now, one of my biggest challenges, we don't have enough people, even amongst that 3,500 people within EMC, or if you extend it out to our partners, which is a huge extension of, of EMC, they're, our, they're part of our family too, right? There's not enough people out there who know Hadoop, Hadoop Enterprise, can go and uh, talk, Isilon, talk, talk Green Plum, talk Green Plum could, could uh, talk about vFabric app director or vFabric data director and how we can uh, uh, help build next generation apps, apps and use Cloud Foundry and, this, this, it's a, it's a real yeah, I mean, trick, right? I mean, we were yeah. talking to Pat Gelsinger, and one of the things that, another observation to your point, I want to ask you, that, and, and it leads to a question that's relevant to your new role is, 
um, the transformation on the product side. So, um, separate from the structure with the VCs and doing some yep. cool stuff with, with the EMC Labs, um, the product sides are much more integrated now. And you've always been up yep. on the demos. We've known you for doing, you know, showing off the latest technology, how this works and that works. Now you have an integrated product set where you have VMAX working with other stuff. You got Green Plum, yep. Isilon. Now you're talking about open source with Hadoop. You just mentioned that. So, so I want to get your perspective. Um, as you go out to the field and you have to go to the customers and to your own force, there's an integrated mindset now. Yep. The value propositions are changing. How do, you, um, how do you roll that out and how do you talk to your, your troops? Uh, the first thing that we do is uh, we create no air gap between us and our partners. So first things first, literally we've got all of the TCs here for our TC uh, you know, boot camp, our, 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 our conference, right? Our TC conference, we said, uh, doors wide open to a partner. So first things first, you, you get some better scale and leverage and you bring your partners closer, right? Um, the second thing is that you have to have both generalists, which has a negative connotation, right? So people, oh, they're just a generalist, right? Uh, I think of it this way, they're more like an architect. They can- They have versatility. They, they, can, they, they can traverse the entire uh, world uh, of, of IT, of, of big data, the whole portfolio. Understand um, how all the pieces how fit the together. Pieces fit right? together, right? You need that. Um, you need that. And, and roughly that's about half of our entire uh, you know, pre-sales community are composed of those types of folks. But then equally important, you have to have people who are deeply specialized. So we have specialization focused around, uh, around Isilon and VNX. We've got specialization around uh, you know, VMAX and VPlex and RecoverPoint and also mainframes. We've got specializations around SAP, around Oracle, around the management and orchestration stack. I mean, you guys, did you do anything with the, talking about Razor and Puppet earlier? Uh, not yet, we were going to answer, I was going to answer that question. I mean, that, how cool is, how cool is that? Seriously, is that cool? Yeah, it's phenomenal. And the story behind that, I did a blog post on it, I think the yeah. story behind the story is actually the cool part. So basically. Talk about that, yeah. There's a guy, uh, he came into EMC 2010, right? Uh, and uh, his name's Nick Weaver. He uh, joined the team on the V-Specialist, uh, focused on VMware and EMC uh, in, the, in this pre-sales capacity. And he quickly kind of, everyone's unique, every human is unique. Uh, his superpower, right, was the ability to learn super fast and to be able to Uberize anything. Uberize became a Nickism, and we all kind of adopted it where you take an idea and turn it into something that's way better, right? Not invent the original idea, but take the idea and make it way better. So he was struggling in, you know, internally, and by, and by the way, he quickly started to touch all of this stuff and we said, you know what, this guy should really be in the office of the CTO. So we worked to move him into the office of the CTO where he could have a broader impact across mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole of EMC. And in there he starts to work on OpenStack, building clouds with vCloud Director, and he started to get exposed to some of the challenges that we've got. Like, look, if, we're, if you're building a thousand node Hadoop cluster, like we have, right, you're building a lot of servers, you're constantly building them, tearing them down, you know, applying stuff, and we didn't have a common EMC way that we were doing builds of our infrastructure. So he goes off and he tries to find something that could take a bare metal server build and, and automate its, its, uh, its installs. There's lots of tools out there, but none of them satisfied Nick Weaver. And he's a bit of a perfectionist, in a good way. So he goes off and he starts to build his own thing. And so he builds a, a, an idea, a prototype, called Razor, based off of Occam's Razor, right? Trying to cut yep. through, you know, the simplest way, you know, to solve a, a problem is usually the right one, or the simplest answer is usually the right one. And uh, it's this beautiful little thing that allows you to boot a server, it pixie boots, builds a little microkernel, microkernel boots up, connects to the Razor server, and then it builds a, a declarative object-based model for how that server is defined. Now, it's a fancy way of saying it makes you able to build fully anything automated. fully automated yeah. in like a fraction of the time. So when, when, when Paul Moritz talks about you know, one administrator managing, you know, thousands, thousands of, of uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like and Google. IT should be the same, right? So, so what ended up happening was he developed this thing and people were like, holy smokes, this is really, really cool. Um, what are we going to do with it? Because this is not, I mean, we're going to use it for ourselves, but there's so much more that we could do for this. And we said, why don't we connect it up into, um, into Puppet? 
And so we reached out to the Puppet Labs guys, mm -hmm. and the Puppet Labs guys are the ones who build the cloud automation for all of the big clouds. Yeah, they've been know. on theCUBE a couple times. And, right? and, uh, well, we have DevOps section, DevOps Angle, a new section on Silicon Angle now, and we've been covering Puppet, Chef, Ops, Code, all you know, yeah. these guys, and, and uh, automation's been app specific. But yep. to get into the EMC world, and you guys, you know, it's a validation one for open source. Uh, congratulations to Puppet. But it really, it shows the direction of the versatility well, of EMC. Like you guys are moving into uh, configuration management, automation, at this nice little layer, abstraction layer between gear and apps. The fact that we've now contributed that to the open source movement and now it's part of Puppet, and the whole story highlights to me, holy smokes, if you think EMC is a storage company, you know, yes, we are the best storage company, but we're far, far more than that, one. Yeah. Number two, think about the culture that creates an opportunity where a guy can go from an idea and innovation to eventually something that is big enough that it is press release you know, worthy in like a period of like a few months. Uh, that's, that's a culture of It shows of some fun nimbleness too. Yeah. It shows you guys are nimble, but how did that all play out? So this little prototype, what happened next? Did he bring it to you? Who did he bring it to? No, basically the office of the CTO started to circulate it within EMC. Uh, we reached out to the guys at Puppet Labs and said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And they were like, holy smokes, we've been trying to solve this problem of bare metal you know, automation, all because they were basically taking stuff once systems were booted and up. They wanted something where they could automate the whole stack from beginning to end. And they go, this, this solution is more elegant than any of the ones that we've ever been looking at. You know, let's partner up, and we're like, yeah. hey, cool. So, Dave and I were just talking earlier on the intro segment chat about how um, he asked me about OpenStack, and and you know, a lot of these open source movements are are not pivoting because the market's growing. Yeah. Pivoting is kind of a negative term, um, but finding a center point, as Pat Gelsinger said, you know, uh, uh, when he talked about Red Hat, there'll be no Red Hat for Hadoop. And what you're seeing is, is that the opportunity is that um, people are trying to find a home where they can put their base camp and grow their business. So yep. for Puppet, they've always been on the app side, Opens, OpenStack on another one, is trying to find a home on how they commercialize the stack, yep. if you will, for cloud. So you can't ignore EMC, right? So yep. EMC's got a lot of customers, they have a lot of other products. So but here's the interesting thing about that story, and it's the dirty little secret of this business, and we all know it, is that we spend an enormous amount on labor. Yeah. If you look at how much is, if you look at server and storage spending, just server and storage and everything around it, about 60% of it goes to labor. Yeah. And that's a problem, that's stifled innovation. Everybody talks about the 70% goes to maintenance and 30% goes to innovation. That's the reason why, is because yep. you get all these hardened processes. And so, and people have been afraid to talk about this because it's, oh, my job's going to go. But I think now people realize, Joe talks about the waves. We're in a new wave, I got to catch it. Surf's up, I got to go. And it's opportunity. Yes, absolutely. Like, man, who wants to be the person doing server builds? And Google got it right. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> By the way, Google's deployment of Puppet is one of the largest Puppet deployments in the world. Right. And the CTO of Puppet came from Google. And by the way, he's going to be on Chad's World Live later at 5.30. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great. Nigel. Well, I mean, I think provisioning has always been a huge issue. And you know, getting it right has, uh, has, has opportunity, but also if you get it wrong, there's consequences. I mean, you know from your doing all your demos yep. and integration where bad configuration management is I've Jeff. got a, I've got a demo, <laughs> one of the Chad's World Live demos. We've got, let's see, four hours to get it right is currently not working. So, yeah. <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> well, you look relaxed. You know that. <laughs> you know. Uh-oh, we don't have internet. You know what's funny? <laughs> While we're recording this in the background, the, the, the Cloud Freaky video is, uh, has been playing. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Which, the Cloud Freaky, it's this us, one here? No, no, it's us dancing. Oh, no, the, I have the, seen that earlier, yes, yes, yes. What do you think of those dance moves? This dude, SVP can dude, dance. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you got a new I want to see the karaoke, I want to see the dancing. Should, of course, we'll be running for the, stick for the, with that. So yeah. do you guys know the story of who's the gorilla reveal at the end? No. So, no. it's Vaughn Stewart from NetApp. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, it, check it out. Go online, Cloud Freaky. Uh, you'll find it on YouTube. Vaughn Stewart, all right. Can you believe that? Friend or foe. <laughs> <laughs> That's he's, cool. He's, he's a good sport. That is cool. He's a good uh, yeah. sport. <laughs> so, what else have awesome. you guys seen here that you think is cool? Did you like those demos during the keynote? Oh, they're great. I thought uh, you and Pat were great. I mean, yeah, you guys I, I like, first of all, <laughs> but him in, the, in, the, in Captain Kirk's chair, the Star Trek thing was, was I thought, the best <laughs> part. And then Pat's reaction to that was pretty funny. I wanted, always wanted to do that. Were, were you guys in the room when no, it was we going, were, or we you were, were here? We yeah, were Did you hear the explosion from here? Yes, uh, we did. We, we could see it and, he, and hear it, but it was muffled. It wasn't, I, I heard people wow. that took, right, right next to it said they were freaked. It, it was, you know, it was they definitely. Had to go change their as, shorts. As we were, <laughs> because the, the, the demo, right, was basically a Hadoop, Greenplum Hadoop, running on an Isilon cluster, and we wanted to highlight 
that, hey, look, this thing can run even with distributed node failures, right? We're like, well, look, failing a node is kind of lame, like unplugging power, we want to, you got to zazz it up a little bit, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so, but then we, were, we, we had this big discussion, it was funny with Jeremy uh, in the run-up uh, the week before, where literally we debated for a few hours the question of, very deep, important question of, is it possible to have too many explosions in <laughs> keynotes? <laughs> <laughs> Conclusion? No. 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 You no. could not have too Never many. Never too many bombs <laughs> going off. But then we said, look, if we don't give the audience some cue that there's about to be something that happens, people are going to have like a heart attack, right? Yeah, like a blue man group before they throw stuff at you, right? Right, <laughs> so, so we, we, we built in a, a little like, uh, a forklift backing up, beep, 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 into the, into the, into the script so you could uh, kind of go, hey, something's going on, right? So Chad, we have, uh, Dave and I were talking about, we're going to get your comment, because you always talk about VMware. Um, mm -hmm. We're interested in what's going on with VMware because I'm not seeing a lot of VMware stuff here. I mean, I'm seeing it, yeah. but not as much as usual. Um, a lot of action going on at VMware right now. They're in a great position. You know, yep. we're seeing a lot of stuff with VCE. We're talking about VBlock and SAP. Just the EMC VMware coalition is going great. Um, what's the update on your end? Because so, you're out in the field. What's the traction? Where are they doing well? Where they need to do work, uh, so, better work? So, for, first things first. There's more VMware here than there's been in any year gone by. The VLabs we've done together jointly. You know, the, the announcement that we were going to be integrating vCenter Ops, uh, vCenter Operations, I shouldn't use the VCOPS acronym, right? vCenter Operations being integrated with VNX's storage analytics, mm -hmm. that's a huge deal, right? Like, there's, there's no analog to that in, in the industry yet, I'm sure others will follow, but people want to get that kind of integrated end-to-end -end view, and frankly, the hundreds of thousands of customers um, for, for for VNXs represents a, a great you know, entree for VMware to, to, to get this vCenter Ops uh, in more people's hands, right? And I'm sure Rich didn't mention it on in his keynote, but it's priced to have nearly a 100% attach rate, right? You know, it's priced to, 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 to any customer, the, yep. the, any customer who's looking at a VNX if you're not asking your, your partner or the EMC or that you're talking to to have storage analytics included, you're missing out because it's basically a very, very, very nominal uh, uh, price. Now. Which is so smart, by the way. It, exactly. You know, right. I mean, give them the data and they'll figure right. out new ways to new, consume they, new applications. Exactly, right it's now. It's just going to drive business for you. Now, That's, Really uh, smart. So what's working is uh, customers continue to just absolutely dig vSphere. Uh, the vSphere stack continues to be well ahead of the competition. Now, a Hyper-V version three is going to be coming uh, coming soon, and it yep. definitely uh, adds a lot. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's a continuous game of re leapfrog. And I, uh, knowing Steve Harrod and the other smart engineering folks at in uh, Palo Alto there on Hillview, uh, I can't anticipate them uh, uh, giving a inch of ground to their competitors. So, so basically, there's not I a lot of hype on VMware. If I could just uh, follow on that. Yeah. So the, the, the problem was, like several years ago, the, 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 the VMware storage piece yep. was so deficient and mm -hmm. so lacking, and it was just a bottleneck for so yep. many customers. And the whole industry, VMware obviously included, had to work so hard for that, yep. and then the whole VAI thing. And, and now you're seeing the innovation at yep. the tail end of that. We've been talking about yep. this for yep. years. You said, Dave, it's coming, and here it is. We've talked roadmaps. And, it's really coming to fruition, and that's why capabilities like the ones we're talking about right. are now available now, today. Uh, Vue is also, you know, I think that I think that VMware could do more. You know, if I if I'm sitting as an external party, kind of looking in, Vue five is very very good, uh -huh. and I think that they uh, need to not lose sight. It's always difficult as your portfolio broadens. To, to, to have your field force and your channel and your partners and your marketing talking about the everything, right? Uh, Vue, you know, we're, we, again, we're using Vue uh, 5.0 here at, in the V Labs, and there's now a vCenter operations plugin and connector for Vue, which is really, really sweet, right? Again, all this stuff ties together. Um, you know, obviously that's a battleground where it's them and Citrix for the most part, and they're battling it out fast and furious, right? We obviously have to support whatever our customers want. We've got vSpec solutions for, for, for Citrix, for Vue, right? But it's an area where I think uh, market perception and go to market uh, is actually not representative of 
the coolness that's in their core product. And they made an acquisition actually uh, yesterday, a small one, uh, to continue to extend out that lead. So you can check it out later if you'd like. Um, but the place where I think the biggest, the biggest, uh, another place where they're hitting on all cylinders, by the way, is Cloud Foundry and the VFabric mm. suite is super, super hot, yeah. right? But the, the, the question is like, again, how do you commercialize these open, free models? They're winning the hearts and minds of developers, which I think is Paul's strategy. Yeah, yeah. But the one place where I think um, they're, they're, they're still not firing all cylinders, and again, I don't think it's a product thing, I think it's a go-to-market thing, is on the management and automation stack. The number of customers who I talk to that aren't using VC Orchestrator, mm -hmm. which is free and included, hmm. the number of customers that aren't yet using vCenter operations, right? Um, the number of customers that aren't using vCloud Director um, is disproportionate to their to how much those things can provide value. Why? What's what's the what's the gate? I, I think I think process, no it, it you, the brutally honest answer, which we should always give, right? It's, it's awareness. I think, I think it's awareness yeah. and the sales force, mm -hmm. right? So the customers aren't aware. They keep turning to VMware and VMware's partners going, give me the latest, fastest version of vSphere. And, and then, you know, they, they, they aren't basically spending the time to educate them about the sheer coolness that is vCenter operations, that is, you know, that is uh, the whole suite, by the way. It's, incredibly rich and they're bringing all that stuff together, or, or, or vCloud Director. So what are you seeing out there? So just, we we're just looking at our little dashboard here about the trending items uh, in our little network, Dave, on uh, our vertical engine, or yep. as we call vFinder, our new product. Yep. Uh, not to be confused with vCenter and vOps and all that other good VMware stuff. Um, Everything's uh, a V, everything. Cloud Foundry just announced a deal with uh, Kinvey. Yep. Uh, a startup in Boston that we met two weeks ago. Yeah, Convey, right. Uh, Convey doing platform as a service. So obviously VMware's got platform as a service. Mm -hmm. um, we've been having a debate about this um, as two schools of thought out there in the community. Uh, a race to zero value, which is a hosting model, and then added value with software wrapped around. So you know, you talk about Puppet, and that's a little added value you're adding to your bad metal provisioning. You're seeing platform as a service. There's a lot of demand for platform as a service. What do you hear in the field relative to this? Because what you're talking about is that's where the hybrid cloud action is right now. You know what? You know what? I think is is again this uh, transform yourself challenge for us. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I hear I hear a lot personally from customers. Our field, by and large, doesn't hear enough. And you know why? Those conversations are generally not being had at the infrastructure team level. Right, and that's an exposure for anybody who's a. Uh, focused at the Exposure in what way? <sighs> These platform as a service models, many, many enterprises that I talk to at least, are looking to both use external PaaS offerings, so they want to use cloudfoundry.com, but they also want to create their internal platform as a service that they can use for internal development. Most, most enterprises have got some common stack. You know, the, the older versions of it was like the LAMP stack, right? Yeah, right. You know, Linux, Apache, blah, 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 blah right? You know, now there's a modern stack versions which you know are more like the V Fabric portfolio of stuff, which still, of course, has Tomcat server in there and, and things like that. But they want to develop something internally that's going to sit on some sort of infrastructure. But fundamentally, the person who's driving that demand isn't an infrastructure person. The infrastructure person doesn't even know about it. It's being driven out of an app dev team, yeah. right? And what I'm saying is we've got, you know, sometimes as the infrastructure player, you've got some blinders on, right, to something that's going on outside your space. We shouldn't, because that's not outside our space, <laughs> right? But, but um, you know, if, if uh, you know, it was, it was one of your colleagues, I've seen so many inspiring tweets <laughs> over the last, did you see this one that I was talking about? Which it one? was, um, uh, I can't remember which which analyst it was, but um, and what was the conspiracy the, theory? It well, was, the, the, the he tweet, or she was putting out there. No, the tweet the tweet was depressing because it was real. It was not a conspiracy theory. Oh, okay. He goes, I'm on an elevator, and inside the elevator, there's an EMC employee, and then someone who's just here at the casino, and they they see all the signage, they see all the people wearing the stuff, all pumped up. Hey, EMC world. What's EMC? And they go, What's EMC? Yeah. And the EMC goes, We're a storage company. And you're just like, oh, you know. And the, the comment was, you need to train your own people about to redefine who you who you are, right? And the comment back to this question about platform as a service is, 
our story includes all of those things. We've got answers. Yeah, this path is and, a gateway and, to that there's market. There's a gateway to that market, huh. but if we're blinded to it, okay. you know, so, so, there's so, a risk, there's So you agree, you're not a storage company, what are you? We're basically the, we're the purveyors of disruption. We're leading the whole <laughs> transition towards cloud, big data, right? And we're doing that through a full stack of solutions that range from all sorts of stuff at infrastructure, all sorts of stuff at the virtualization layer, all sorts of stuff around the application layer, all sorts of stuff around end user computing, and big data and analytics, right? Now, we need to figure out how we can wrap that up into something you can say on the elevator right before the person gets off, uh, but, we, but that's who we are. Yeah, you are the future of information technology is yeah. really what you're we're talking about there, but um, that's a funny story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Chad, okay. great to have you on theCUBE. We're getting a hook sign here. Um, John. Chad's world, great, great stuff. Chad, Chad fantastic. Fantastic. Promotion. thank you for making time. Hey, we'll see everybody, including you guys, right? Yeah, 5.30, 5, 5 Chad's tonight. world, we live. Get, we got Scott McNeely coming on at 5.15, so right after that. Oh, we'll, forget McNeely. Come, come on, on, we got to have Scott <laughs> on, <laughs> old friend. You know. We're going to make, we're going to, we're going to, he's going to be really he's gonna uh, say, uh, a known quantity after he comes on theCUBE. He's going to say, I used to be famous and now I'm on theCUBE. He's a good dude, he's a good dude. We'll be right back with Silicon Angle.tv's extensive coverage of EMC World, day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, 120, hour, 120 guests this week, Cube is having a full run summer tour. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.